Hello everyone and welcome to the afternoon session. I'm pleased to invite Florian to the stage who is an open source PHP developer from Germany. He's an active contributor in the, P uh, in the Typo3 com community since 2014 and he's going to be talking to us about a modular Mautic setup. Yeah, hello and uh, welcome everybody to my second talk of the day and um, make yourself comfortable. It's already tea time in Germany, so um, let's make yourself comfortable and then let's talk about uh, Composer and a modular Mautic setup by using this. Cheers. Ah. Ah, so <laughs> let's go and start. Yeah, welcome back. So um, before we start, I want to introduce myself so that you get to know me and you know which guy is talking to you and why uh, and yeah. So I'm an open source web developer since mm, year 2008 or in, in 2008 I started to develop my first application during my studies, earn some money there and um, after that I make it to my profession and started at, as a web developer at for digital marketing in 2014 and since then I become a coach and um, now I'm a head of services here in Hanover and by that I'm a type 3 expert so um, a bit of historic background um, type 3 started to make itself modular in year it was 2000 16 somewhere then with version 8 of its content management system so I already take part at a process to make a static CMS more modular and yeah that's why I'm talking to you today and besides of that I'm a Mordic enthusiast since 2018 so I get first in touch with Mordic almost two years ago um, started to develop some applications or some plugins so as you may know the Authero module where you can log in into the Mordic backend by using Authero so a single sign-on provider or if you're in the German markets we have the Deutsche Post so uh, the Deutsche Post bundle um, where you can send postcards and letters by campaign actions to your customers and yeah long story short that's me and uh, let's start looking on the agenda so first of all I want to provide a brief overview about Composer so what is Composer and um, why you should use this and why this is state-of-the-art when you're developing a PHP application then I want to show you what advantages in modular setup brings with it so um, where you can profit from them and yeah uh, also I want to show uh, to to point to some things that you have to keep in mind when we're using a modular setup so for example um, not everybody runs a composer instance or has composer on a server so we have to provide all the code and all the logic with a single package so that you can install your modic and all the bundles which we want to make modular um, without composer so that's that's the big big um, thing we have to tackle and keep in mind and after that I want to show you a proof of concept and this proof of concept is already in half year uh, or I did this proof of concept a half year ago so it's uh, obviously for Mordic 2, but um, I guess it's um, just, or what I guess, so it's it's just a proof of concept and uh, we can adapt all these things and uh, the things I learned from that to Mordic 3, that's, um, that should be, should be good. So let's start with the brief overview about what Composer is. Here in general, um, Composer is just a package manager for PHP applications, so what NPM, the Node Module Package Manager, is for Node.js. Um, the Composer is for PHP application, and it handles dependencies. So, um, I would just give you an example when you have two bundles um, which do do some stuff with Amazon. So, the one is um, the CloudFront because you want to store your assets in a CDN and um, it integrates Modic with CloudFront and the other is an S3 bucket bundle so 
maybe your themes should be stored in an S3 bucket. So both the CDN and the S3 bucket need to use the Amazon API library. So it's a package from Amazon where you can connect your application with Amazon services or with Amazon Web Services. And the first one uses this this bundle in the version 1.2 and the second one, so the S3 bucket bundle, uh, requires the version 2. So, And this will become a conflict because when you install both plugins, they need other versions of the same library. And when in version 1 the constructor of one class um, needs two arguments and the other one in the more newer version it needs a th third argument so this will become a conflict and um, everything will crash so nothing worked and that's where Composer comes into place or into play because um, Composer handles these dependencies and says okay uh, when you want to install the CDN extension or the bundle um, I cannot install because there is there is a conflict in your dependency. So make sure to update the API library to a new version or um, yeah, I will not install that. And um, another example on this is um, when you have a bundle and the bundle is only compatible with Mordic 2, you cannot or Composer will not install this bundle on a Mordic 3 instance. So that's another big advantage. So you cannot install bundles which are not compatible with your modic instance or with a modic version so even there there will be no error hopefully <laughs> and um, yeah how, how you can interact with composer composer um, has a command line interface um, yeah and you can just composer install composer update so there are a lot of commands you can run and um, i will not dive deeper into that because that uh, would be an own session, so uh, <laughs> not for the moment. That should be all. That should be a brief overview about what Composer is, and then we go on. To give you a brief example how this works on the command line, we just create a new Composer package. So let's type in Composer in it, and then you see we'll get an dialog here and uh, let's start over so uh, our package name vessels modicon that's fine for now description is um, demo package um, the author that's me okay minimum stability for us is dev and this is a modic plugin the license is gpl 3 journal or later and dependencies yes i want to define some dependencies and uh, what do i need maybe i need uh, gazelle http because i want to um, make http requests so yeah, here we go version 3.7 that's fine okay so no dev dependencies this file looks good i will confirm now and install all the dependencies So here we go, and as you can see, um, I only required one package, so Gazel HTTP, but it seems like Gazel HTTP requires some other dependencies, and these dependencies will now be installed automatically. And when I take now a look at the folder structure or the file system, um, we can see we have another file, the composer log file. The composer JSON file is that what we see above. So just take a look at this. You see here, it's the same as it is, is here and the composer log file um, has more information about what version is installed because we have version 3.7.dev required and when we take a look at the composer log file um, there should be a hard version installed so for example we have here the symphony polyfill and uh, here the version is dev main okay that's not a hard version because we required all the dev stuff here and all the dependencies are installed in the vendor directory so when we take a look at the vendor we have the gazelle we have the psr and uh, of course symphony and that should be enough from here yeah let's start and um, let's dive deeper into the modular setup so first of all 
before we s yeah, before we really start so uh, let's take a look at our ecosystem and um, figure out what kind of files and um, bundles and plugins we have in a modic eco ecosystem so first of all there are the modic system bundles so the core the asset bundle the config bundle and so on and all of these bundle uh, bu <laughs> bundles uh, bundles are located in the app directory and then plugins the next type of files or packages we have that are our custom plugins so uh, as i mentioned before the othero bundle or the trigger dialog bundle for the deutsche post and they are located in plugins and for now or at the moment they all need to have the namespace modic plugin because um, the auto loader looks for these files or this namespace in this directory then we have the configuration files so the local configuration or the default configuration files they are located in app, app config and then we have other general files so for example the index php file or um, our console which is located in bin console or uh, uh, or our HD access or robots txt which is uh, located in the project root and then there are other files so the codeception or um, php stand files um, we don't need that in a configuration or in a product um, in a production system so um, yeah but they're there Okay, that, that's for, for the ecosystem and then I want to take a look on some advantages I um, want to point out or point on. Um, and first of all, quite obviously, that is um, when we use a modular setup by Composer, we have a dependency management. So as I said in, um, in the first part of this uh, session, we, we have all, all dependency resolved and as I showed with the Gazelle HTTP, um, all dependencies will be installed automatically. Then the next one is um, we can only install the plugins and, um, and the bundles we only need. So when we don't want to send SMS with in our modic or from our modic, we don't need the SMS bundles, for example. Or um, when we don't want to use assets, we don't need this bundle. And so uh, we can just uh, leave it out have a more compact modic and um, have have no other code that is on our system and we don't need okay so that's this point and um, the other one is um, the meta metadata can be retrieved from the composer file so uh, for example the description or the name of um, of our bundle for now that is stored in the config.php file in our bundles and it is possible to retrieve all this data from the composer json file so author information for example as well and speaking of uh, composer json files we can use these files to build a marketplace on that file so as i said metadata is stored there author information is there uh, there are links to uh, for for support or to the repository or for external documentation and um, there are all this information are all included in the composer json files okay in a marketplace we can support private repositories so we at leuchtfeuer we have our own dedicated composer repository which is called Zatis and you can only access this server by your credentials and when you buy a plugin in in the marketplace or a theme you will get some credentials for that and simply you can add this repository to your composer json file and require this package so you have access to that and yeah there are more possibilities so you can build a great ui on that and so on yeah and um the next point is, as I said before, all of the modic plugins you develop, they need to have the namespace modic plugin as composer, the author loader, which already exists in modic, uh, will look for modic bundles within the plugins directory. And um, when we use the modular setup, all extension vendors or plugin vendors, so sorry when I talk about extensions because uh, as I said before, I'm a Type 3 expert, and uh, Type 3 call its plugins extensions because they extend the Type 3. So um, when I said extension, I mean 
plugins. <laughs> okay, uh, nonetheless, um, uh, you can use your own company name for 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 your bundles or plugins. So maybe Leuchtfeuer slash Authero or mm, your you name it, whatever your company is. So you can use your own vendor name there in the extensions or in the plugin. Another advantage is that you can update all your custom plugins and the modic bundles with one command line call. So composer update modic slash uh, asterisk or whatever and you will all uh, update all your um, modic bundles. Mm, that's very very good. And what packages does automatically for you is um, it will track the downloads. So how many downloads, how many people downloads Mordic within the last seven days or so, and you you will find that. So another benefit is that um, all your development or building files, like the grunt file or the codeception file for the acceptance test or the PHP stand for the static code analytics. Uh, they don't need to be on the production system because you don't need them there and why should they be there so uh, the composer can handle that also um um other composer plugins can hook into your installation and make it more secure in type 3 we have a composer plugin which is called secure web and it takes care about um the location of files so where files are located and basically only that files that are allowed to access by the user so the index php file or assets like um, css files or javascript files um, are located in the public directory and uh, your virtual host or the document root will point to that public directory all other files are located in a private directory on the same system so the php code maybe or other file that um, you don't want to access directly via browser. So for now, um, the HD access of Modic takes care about that by allowing only access to several files or to some files. Um, and um, we can make this more secure by putting all the files that you want to access in the public directory and you don't want to access in the private directory. Basically, um, the public directory will symlink files from the private directory that makes your installation more secure let's talk about patches sometimes it could be that uh, you need to patch your modic because um, you have a special use case and you created a pull request and the community said okay oh no we don't want this feature uh, just implement it on your own you can apply apply patches by composer automatically so you can put your patch file in a dedicated directory and then require one composer um package i will show you here or there or somewhere i don't know where where the where the screen is maybe here <laughs> uh, i will show you the package name and uh, when you require this you can define in the in, in the extra section you can define the the patch file and uh, to which package it belongs to and then it will handle it or will, will be applied automatically when you install your dependencies and as you see or as you can imagine you don't need to touch the source code for that so you have clear modic source code you can update your installation very very smooth and um, after the package is installed your patch will be applied Another advantage for, for us uh, as an agency is um, the automated workflows Composer w could bring you. So sp speaking of versioning of entire projects, uh, we can put entire projects on, in, in the Git and uh, yeah, deploy them, create test instances or staging instances, develop on it, put it in the Git and on push there will, will be a build process and a deployment process uh, which rolls out your source code onto your changes to all the systems you need in just a few seconds okay and there are some things that you have to keep in mind so um, there are some points we, we struggled with them when we 
introduce the um, modular setup for Type 3. And first of all, which you have to keep in mind, is that you have to allow installation on both ways. So the traditional one that is used nowadays and the installation by using Composer. So you have to structure your source code and um, spend a lot of time on that, figuring out how that this could work for Modic. And it's not trivial. It's, it could be a nail biter, but uh, yeah, there is a way. Then I come to the next point is um, there is no way to use Composer for the core bundles and uh, no Composer for the plugins. So there is an on off. You use Composer or you use no Composer. So let's keep in mind that. And how we solve this in the Type 3 project is uh, on installation, um, on Composer installations, we insert a Composer mode constant on the fly. So there is a hook, a Composer hook. When installation is done, we insert a Composer mode constant or a, um, a global. And in our source code, uh, when we have to handle things different between Composer setups and non-Composer setups, we, we just look if the constant is defined and if it is there and when so we do it on the s one way and when it is not defined we'll do it on the non-composer way so that's how we solve this problem and last but not least the documentation has to be done yeah and, and f f personally for me I, I i don't like documentation so maybe i would call leon uh, the team leader of the education team and say okay leon here we have a great idea we want to introduce a uh, composer setup for our for the for the whole Mori project and we want this and that and that has to be documented so here you go <laughs> let's start okay what it needs so as i said before we have to support both kind of installations non-composer setups and composer setups and the first thing we have to do is to add an composer JSON file to all of our plugins. So the core plugins, which are located in the plugins, and there are some, so the CRM bundle or the, or, uh, the, the Gmail bundle. And we have to add this composer JSON file also to our core bundle. So they are located in app plugins, for the core bundle itself or the SMS bundle. Um, yeah, that's, that's the first thing. And the second is, the second thing is, then there has to be a composer plugin which takes care about um, placing files to the target destination so um, you don't want to have all files in the vendor directory and when you switch back uh, to the example i show you all the dependencies are by default installed in the vendor directory and we don't want that so there needs to be a plugin which takes care about that. And this plugin needs to figure out whether we want to install a core bundle, a theme, or um, a custom plugin. So in Composer, we have uh, Composer types. And there is already the type uh, modding plugin. And all the packages uh, labeled or have this type. They can be installed securely in the plugins directory. Then we need to create a new type which maybe is modic core bundle or core plugin and all these packages have to be uh, or have to be installed in the app plugin directory and then maybe we have another type which is called i don't know uh, modic themes and um, these packages are then located or are then installed and moved to um, the themes directory what I did earlier this year, when or during the first Corona lockdown, when I had some time, I created a proof of concept, and yeah, you know, this POC is uh, based on Modic 2, and let's take a look at it, and yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, we're now looking at the source code of a proof of concept I did earlier this year, so nine months ago, and all our core bundles are stored in the packages directory, for example, here is uh, the modic core or the modic form bundle or the stage bundle, the user bundle, and so on. And we have a project composer JSON, and let's take a look into that file. 
here we here we require all our bundles we need so we have our zero bundle as well as the api or the core and the modic stuff so let's take a look at the core so here it is the modic core and we can find and compose a json file here and define our requirements so we have php 7.2 or 7.3 not 7.4 this core bundle has dependencies to other um, core bundle uh, to other modic bundles so we require it here and also it has requirements to the symphony assets the monolog bundle the bridge and so on so all these dependencies are defined in the core bundle and as you see here the type is modic framework for now and when we take a look at the bundle so this is the composer json file of our o0 login bundle you will find the type here and the type is modic plugin so that's the thing where our library can or our composer plugin can decide where to install this package is it a modic plugin or is it a framework bundle so let's go ahead and what we also hear is somewhere there it is we have a composer installer and um, this package does not exist now so this is in the um, our source here here it is this is a composer json uh, the composer installer and yeah it is it this is the plugin that handles all the stuff with the files where they are located uh, where it should be installed and so on and now we're taking a look at the bundle installer which is located in the composer installer source installer directory and we see here we have our constants um, and um, it's a modic framework for our core bundles then the modic plugin for our custom plugins and modic theme for the themes and here we are when we're looking here when we uh, get the install path we decided okay um, when it is a framework or when, when our package is of type framework we get the system bundle directory and um, the system bundle directory is the root directory and then uh, here system bundles or app bundles uh, you name it then we have the theme directory and themes and the bundle directory for our custom plugins is plugins and here here's the switch and um, depending on the type of your composer package it will be moved to the proper path and we're now looking in our core bundle again and we have here a new directory which is cl uh, classes and then composer and we have two files here the cli entry point and the installer scripts and when we take a look at the installer scripts we have all the files that are belonging not to a dedicated module so the htaccess file the fav icon the index php and so on also um, the upgrade php and all these files will be moved from this bundle into the target directory so um, the htaccess file will be moved in the base directory and then the file name and um, we have a cli entry point which is our console and it is located in our base directory which is the dear name too so we have um, the modic core and then there must be a directory installer and there has to be the cli php and this, w this file will be will, will be moved to bin slash console and let's take a look so we here then there is the installer directory and here we have the files so here is the cli file this one is our entry point for the console and um, this file will be moved to our project route so that's it i guess for now from here so let's try to install that so now i'm in my terminal and um, in the sites directory and let's clone this repository i showed you before so do a git clone and then we do this and let's call it modicon okay now i go to the modicon directory and here is the composer json file and just do a composer install so now our composer has finished the installation and uh, what we see here is we have the vendor file and uh, the htdocs 
directory. So the vendor, um, let's take a look into this directory. Um, this is all the third party applications. So um, Doctrine here, or Gazelle HTTP IP to location, or Joomla, or the monologue, or you name it. So this is for the third party applications. And then we have the htdocs directory, and let's take a look into that. And as we see here, we have all the files. So the fav icon, the index.php, the index dev, and offline. And we also should have the htaccess file here. Yes, there it is. Here we have the directory uh, plugins and system. And in system, there are the core bundles. And uh, there are sim linking from here to our packages, Modic API, because uh, I stored them in the packages library, uh, packages directory, as you can see in the Git repository. And you can see, or, or what you also see is the name is different. So um, the package name is Mordic Page, and it is called Page Bundle here, or the core is uh, named Core Bundle here. That for the bundles, and um, yeah, here in the system directory also have the app cache, the kernel, the auto load PHP, and uh, the version text, and anything else you configure it in your installer script, and. When we go here and take a look in our plugins directory, we have the Mordic Auth0 bundle here. And yeah, pretty cool. That's how it works. And welcome back from my couch. I don't know where my cup is. Uh, where is my cup? So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. As I said, welcome back. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you have a lot of questions now in the Q&A session and we can start a very, very good discussion now. So anyhow, if you want to f ask me afterwards, you can find me on LinkedIn or on Twitter or in the Modic Slack at uh, the just look for Flossels um, or in the Type 3 Slack as well. And of course, I have an email address and it is uh, f.vessels at leuchtfeuer.com. So let's start a great discussion and see where we go. Thanks for listening. Okay, thank you for that great presentation. I'm just going to yeah. share the screen which should have our slides, so bear with me a second. There have been some questions that have come in. Great. <laughs> so um, Nick has asked whether you've seen the work that he's done and the corresponding forum topic, and I, what are your thoughts on how we can proceed? Oh no, I, I don't know that repository. So um, I, I can okay. I can I can suggest that I can take a look on that and um, then we'll get in contact with Nick and uh, or get in touch with him and um, provide him some feedback. I guess that's a great, good starting yeah. point for a great discussion. Yeah, and it's great to see that there's people are approaching things from different avenues yeah. as well, or potentially that we can all bring bring that together, can't we? Super. Okay. So um, I have another question for you. So how much effort do you estimate for the concept that you've presented? Well, that's a good question. Um, when I think back, I guess I, I needed two days to um, go or to come to the point where, where which I showed you before. Uh huh. But but um, it's it's definitely a long term target to to implement this this stuff for for Modic. Yeah, I definitely see working more effectively with Composer as something that's really important for the Modic project. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, does it make sense? Do you think to differentiate between the core bundles and the plugins? <sighs> I guess yes, because um, when when we think at, uh, about the marketplace, um, we don't want to sell our core bundles, um, and that's mm -hmm. that's one thing which which I would say is um, yes, we should uh, decide whether it is a framework or I, I call it a modic framework bundle or a modic plugin. Uh huh. Okay. And. Um... If say you had to deploy like a whole Mautic project, so you were starting from scratch and you had to deploy that all in one go onto your server, could you just talk through like what approach you would take if you had to do that? Um, yeah, so we use a Jenkins and um, a Jenkins SCI CD server and um, a deployer. Deployer is also a PHP tool which takes care about um, deploying your code from one instance to another. 
and um, mm. we, we put all our source code in, in one Git repository, so the whole modic is there and our bundles and so on. And um, basically, our Jenkins takes care about the Git clone. Um, maybe assets will be built, so SCSS files will be built to CSS files, and then um, Deployer takes care to move this project to the servers we defined. Yeah, it sounds like that it. must make life a lot easier for me yeah. old fashioned way, hey? Yeah. <laughs> of like it, unzipping it, and installing a database and it, it is definitely because uh, <laughs> when you have more than one Mordic instance, it it is a good good uh, good way to go with it. Yeah, for sure. Great. Okay. Those are my questions. Uh, so is yeah, there uh, anything else you wanted to talk about? Yeah, one more thing. Um, uh, can you send me the link to the repository? I, I did not notice that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll share it with you. It's on the slide, so I can grab that for you and send it to you. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. I'm sure a lot of people have learned a lot from your session, and I'm looking forward to so. talking a bit more about Composer, actually, in my keynote. So um, heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So thanks very much. Will you be in the networking area afterwards if people want uh, to talk to yeah, you? Yeah, we'll, we'll grab a new cup of tea because the one I showed in the uh, video or in the session is, is already cold. <laughs> and, oh, uh, then no, we'll you can't have cold tea. Area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, super. So if you want to talk further, then do go find Florian over in the um, uh, networking area where you can catch up with him at some point online. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.